And hello YouTube, welcome back to our turbulence modeling. Yeah, I'll be quickly going through you know, some of the thought processes for, for making uh, the cases that I'm talking about, the open form example. So we're doing a mixed convection case. And we were talking about common graph scales in the last video. And we are trying to see what our cell size should be and how we should size our mesh. So we, we saw that we needed about 426 cells in the y direction just to make it um, just to make it such that okay I, I have uh, about Komogoro scale ish kind of a um, you have a domain with uh, Komogoro scales um, sizing so that we can resolve our turbulence accurately and of course we actually wanted to split our our domain into two that means to say okay I have a channel like that I have a channel like that what I want to do is to split it in half so that uh, over here we can have grading. What, are, what do I mean by grading? Grading means that towards the wall my mesh is finer, away from the wall my mesh is coarser. So we have two walls here so that so we need to grade it two sides. All right and to do that we need to split this in half using block mesh or we need to generate block mesh such that such that it is split in half properly. So this is what we are going to do, all right. And yeah, that's 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 one of the things. So we'll need to uh, split it in half, and uh, we also need to try and make sure that streamwise our our delta x plus is about nine, and span wise our delta z plus is about four point five, give or take. All right. Uh, smaller smaller is good, but of course. You know, um, too much, too much, uh, for for uh, the too much, uh, too many cells, and your the the simulation just will not run on the computer. Okay. So how how many cells do we need in theory? So according to this, uh, we we want our cell size to be four times Komogorov scale in the streamwise direction. So if we were to take four times the Komogorov scale, I'll take the denominator as the smallest. I mean your characteristic cell size should be four times the Komogoro scale. That's fine. But your length is actually eight times longer. So you you need eight times the the length of the span or the length of the distance, the 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 the, the separation between the two plates. And we see that we need about eight hundred and fifty one cells. That's a lot of cells. And span wise, if we were to do the same thing. We need uh, span wise. We have about two times common gross scale because common gross scale is roughly like this. Times two, you would have just slightly less than four point five. So two times common gross scale is like so, but again, it's three times longer than the separation between the plates. So we need about six hundred and thirty nine cells. Multiply all this together, we will actually have two hundred and thirty two million cells, and that thing is actually impossible for. Uh, your computer to run as I found out uh, later because when I try to run block mesh with this kind of mesh uh, which is the mesh setting up uh, uh, utility the whole computer froze for about 15 minutes so before I could, could even get the mesh generated it froze up so it is not good you actually uh, need a lot more RAM and your computer specs you need okay a good rule of thumb according to this guy over here where is it cells yeah so this this is a very good one uh, you can uh, your RAM needs to be about 16 or 32 gigs if not more okay the rule of thumb with open form is uh, you need one gigabyte of RAM per million cells. That's a very easy rule of thumb to remember. Okay, one gigabyte for one million cells just to set up the mesh. Don't talk about solving yet. Just to set up the mesh. You have 232 million cells, you need 232 gigabytes of RAM. So that's why the computer froze. So um, you probably need to push it down and the just, just to get it to run, maybe to about four to five million cells at most. That's what this uh, eight gigabytes of RAM allows you to do. Of course, you'll still have your other things running on Windows, which will make your computer lag a lot. 
but I think a hard upper limit is about uh, four, 4 to 5 million no more than that okay so and just for comparison LES simulation they have a order of magnitude about 0 0.3 million cells so you can imagine this kind of uh, simulation for DNS is just impossible to run except that you do it on a supercomputer okay anyway so um, but uh, we'll just continue first to, to see you know, a, a rough estimate for time step and flow through time. Okay, um, because uh, yes, you just, just run with the calculations first. All right, I mean, this, this uh, I should give this guy credit. Yeah, so Wildcat, Wildcat, it's a good guy, um, smart guy. Yes. All right, so um, what's the velocity uh, that you want? If we have a Reynolds number of 3200, uh, okay, uh, and the Reynolds number is defined as so, it's actually the uh, center line velocity times channel half height. When you know that in, in laminar flow, the center line velocity is actually two times the mean velocity. So you can rewrite the, the Reynolds number like so. It's actually the mean velocity times half the channel height, I mean, times the channel height divided by the kinematic viscosity. So this one makes it very easy for us to use. So we, we just have, we get the U mean by doing so. We have the kinematic viscosity, we have the channel height, and we have the Reynolds number. Your mean velocity will be this, about 0 0.308 meters a second. And we'll try to find our Coron's number and our appropriate time step. And this is somewhere to start. So what's the smallest cell size streamwise? Small cell size streamwise is about four times the Kolmogorov scale, which is four times 0 0.002. 3, 5, and the smallest cell size will be um, you have this 4 times the Kolmogorov scale times 0 0.001, 0 0.015 so actually uh, yeah uh, 4 times the Kolmogorov scale times the channel uh, width or distance alright that will give you the appropriate uh, smallest cell size in the streamwise direction that means in the direction where you have flow Okay, so uh, I'll go through it very quickly. Um, we have about 1.4 times 10 to the minus 4. That means the smallest cell size in this direction because you want 4 times the common gross scales. 4 common gross scales. You want a 4 common gross scale equivalent in this, the flow direction. So uh, we will have 4 times the common gross scale here. But remember, Kolmogorov scale is actually um, is actually defined as eta over L, eta being the smallest size, eta over L. So four times of this, you just have four over here and you have uh, four over here. Okay, so four times eta over L. So you want four times eta, eta being your smallest cell size. So you will bring L over to here. That's why you have the four times this uh, Kolmogorov scale ratio, which is this, times L to give you your 4 eta, 4 times the Kolmogorov scale. So that's okay. 4 eta over L equals 1 over 3200 to 0 0.75. Okay, so you want 4 eta. 4 eta is your smaller cell size in the streamwise direction. So it's L over 3200 0 0.75. Okay, so 1 over 3200 to the power of 0 0.75 is this number. And then we just uh, times 4 and times L to give you the... So you times 4 and you times the, the, the length scale which we use, the reference length scale, which is the uh, separation between the two plates. And then we'll have this number here, 1.41 times 10 to the minus 4. So if we want a time step uh, cor for Coron number equals to 1, that means, uh, I, hope, I hope you're familiar with what Quran number is. Okay, so we have a rough time step of Quran number equals 0 0.1. So uh, we have um, U mean going across, you know, four Kolmogorov scales, four eta. And this is the length. This is the length. And this is some velocity. So uh, Quran number is actually equals to U mean over L of the cell. So this is the L of the cell, which is for eta. That's why you're calculating current number. If your current number is one, 
then we have it as such uh, your delta t okay uh, should be times cell delta t okay so anyway the u mean times delta t over the length of cell if you equate that to 1 that means uh, delta t over this is the this is the time step you need right this is time step okay so sorry a uh, Kurok's number equals to u mean times the time step over l of the cell so we have this we have we want to figure out what this delta t should be so we need to set our Kurok number for first i mean for for start for easy starters we set it as one so l cell over u mean that will give you your time step uh, you give you a rough order of magnitude we do that is uh, by doing this l l is this this length here divided by the mean velocity we have a time step of about 4.58 times 10 to the minus 4. if we have a current number of 0 0.5 the time step will be 2.29 times 10 to the minus 4. so to put it in open form to make it very easy we just have a time step of 2 times 10 to the minus 4 and actually we can use the uh, adjustment time step to uh, give it to tell over from hey I don't want I want my coron number to be 0 0.5 maximum coron number to be 0 0.5 and uh, open for more dynamically adjust the time step after each calculation so that you will get you know efficient but efficiency but to give you an initial guess I think this this is actually pretty good okay so this is what the simulation setup will be like in terms of you know physical values we have the time step estimate we have a, the cell size uh, which is obviously, I mean, now now I'm telling you it's too big because I tried it before uh, with this cell size and my whole block mesh just crashed. Not not crashed, it froze the computer up. So, um, yeah. But anyway, this is so you just carry on the calculations and we'll make adjustments later on. Okay, so uh, how do we want data collection? Okay, so we want data collection to be over... You know, sixty-five times sixty-five flow-through times to let the let the simulation kind of settle down a bit to get reach some sort of steady state or or stationary turbulence or whatever you call it, so that uh, the the velocity mean velocity profile and uh, mean temperature profiles will settle down. Okay, so that's what we are aiming for here. So we want a, a periodic. Uh, data collection so you sample data every maybe one once every flow through time okay so maybe over 35 flow through times to to give it give it uh, yeah enough data points right to get a correct statistical average so uh, what's a flow through time again remember the flow through time in this case is actually uh, this uh, mean velocity and you get a characteristic time scale by uh, uh, this this uh, span wise direction I mean no, flow wise direction okay so that's all we are doing with flow through time so if we do that okay we have a span wise direction of 0 0.12 meters velocity about 0 0.307 we have a flow through time on average of 0 0.39 uh, seconds or 0 0.4 seconds so we can find out how long our simulation should be in simulation time. It should be, should be about 26 seconds uh, to get 65 flow through times and 14 seconds for 35 flow through times. So we want to collect data every 0 0.4 seconds after 26 seconds. Okay. Um, and of course we expect our we expect our DNS uh, file to be very big. So uh, we will try and just get you know uh, we don't want velocity and temperature data for every cell that's just way too much we just want velocity and temperature profile across i mean uh across across like the two plates the, the 100 degree c and the 70 degree c plate we want a velocity and temperature profile across this plate that's all we need and plus the muscle number and the wash your stress so that we can calculate our friction velocity so that's that's uh, that's what we're doing here okay so the idea here is to collect data every 0 0.4 seconds after 26 seconds to for 40 seconds 
and since we have 426 cells in the y direction roughly so in this direction we have about 400 cells I uh, think about 400 data points should be enough then then you know the 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 uh, u, u and t data for every cell I mean uh, we we can kind of delete it off and we just preserve this data okay we in because in the whole field in the whole whole field of simulation we will have stored a lot of uh, temperature and velocity data of every single cell in your uh, domain here which is this this uh, parallel plate thing so we want to delete off the redundant data and just get the important data which is this uh, this uh, instantaneous velocity and temperature uh, data plus the the Nusselt number and tau wall all right so that's that's very important to for us to collect the rest we can discard so how do we how do we do all of this in open form okay uh, okay first thing first we will want to you know not start the case from scratch we will try to you know uh, copy and paste the essential elements we need from other cases so let, let's talk about you know let's go through this uh, thought process together first we want to set up the block structure so for the block structure we want um, we may want to take a block mesh from cavity clip because uh, they already have a structure such that you have multiple blocks in there or some other case okay so you want you want a case where someone's already set up this uh, you split this uh, you split the whole domain into multiple blocks so they don't, you don't have to do it from scratch one very good case was this uh, tutorial called channel 395 and actually copied it into the uh, case here so I have this file called reference cases and I have this channel 395 here so I go into channel 395 and what I want to do I don't want everything here what I want is the block mesh okay I want to look at the block mesh so there are a number of things I mean this is also actually a channel flow this is a channel flow but there's no heat transfer in there but the um, thing is the structure of the case is very similar to what we want and of course the boundary conditions that we that means the boundary conditions later on they're very similar to what we want as well so um, system block mesh ticked I mean this these vertices are pretty much okay they have about 12 vertices here okay and um, you need to take a look at this it have two blocks which is good and they actually have grading here as well with uh, appropriate expansion ratios and uh, how do they work uh, the one I'll, I'll elaborate later okay but interestingly I mean all all of these all of these boundaries they are pretty much uh, given written out for you nicely so you can copy and paste most of it all you have to do is to change maybe the names of what your your boundaries are and and of course the, the size of uh, the coordinate system of your vertex right so this these are our vertices so we want to change the coordinate system there and of course here right now I'll, I'll tell you what the grading is grading is here how does it work so um, there are three numbers there are a few numbers here one is the in this hex block one of them is talking about which vertex to use so for example 0 is this one 1 will be the first entry here 3 will be the third entry which is here remember it starts from 0 so so on and so forth this will form the vertices of your block just a reminder and then this one will tell you these three numbers will tell you oh no, how many cells or how many cells yeah how many cells roughly do you want in the x y and z direction and that gives you a rough idea okay how many cells or how many grid points I mean it just differs by one but yeah how, how many cells just just a rough idea simple grading is very interesting here it tells you you know do you want your cell size to change as you increase uh, X Y or Z so how does it work here for example you you have this uh, expansion ratio of one these are actually expansion ratios of expansion ratio and how does it work uh, basically 
this uh, what you see here is actually pertaining to the x direction so this is the x direction you have your uh, first cell and then you have your last cell uh, you have a first and last cell so l last is here and l first is here so what is your expansion ratio the ratio is actually ratio is actually the length of the last cell over the length of the first cell and where how do you know where which cell is the first and the last okay so you when you increase x okay or rather you have a x equals to 0 and x equals to maybe 4 okay the last cell is the cell with the greater x coordinate with a bigger x coordinate this will be the last cell and this will be the first cell this is just some revision all right so i'll stop for now i'll continue elaborating on the case structure and everything in the next video thanks for watching see you again